Aaron here with Creativity Unleashed and in this video I'm working on making a 5 horsepower air compressor. I got the motor used and I got a compressor head from Harbor Freight and someone gave me this tank. I'm going to cut off both of the ends and see if the tank is still good enough to reuse the tank and because I need a bigger tank than this so I'm gonna, um, planning to roll a, a 4x8 sheet of 8 inch for the tank. Well, there it is. Just used a chisel, knock it open. And apparently somebody thought it was their trash bin beforehand. Safety is of extreme importance when working on pressure vessels and air compressors are, um, can be definitely extremely dangerous or even cause fatalities. Um, compressed air, if the tank was to rupture, um, it can definitely be um, fatal. So you should um, definitely understand the ASME code extensively. I've tested the pressure vessel to the recommended testing procedure and I'm a certified structural and pipe welder. So um, yeah, I don't recommend this unless you know what you're doing. All right, let me show you guys where I'm up to right now. I've got both of the tank um, ends um, ground down and polished up. It looks like at some point they hit them with a heavy sludge to try and see how the integrity of the tank was, if it was really rusted or not. I'm probably knocked his out, heat him up with deoxyacetylene. I took a four by eight sheet of eighth inch steel, took it to a place where they had a roller and um, and they rolled it for me for about um, $15 and cut it down to size. Um, this is about seven foot around. Another thing that'd be good to mention is that you can definitely make your own tank ends. You can take a heavier piece of metal, cut it into a circle, heat it, and then hammer it until you finally get the curved shape you like, or else you could cut slats out of it at the correct places and then kind of fold it and weld the seams and you could um, definitely make tank ends that way. Now you can see once I cut where the weld was, the inner band that was where the old tank was welded, where they had it like flanged together, um, just was able to come right out. So here you can see I got the tank clamped up and um, the metal prepped for the weld. I'm using these nifty little weld um, clamp things that hold the material parallel to each other using um, two pipe clamps. I didn't have a long enough one to um, get this flush there. There were a little bit, one to be just a little off. Um, and I have these um, eighth inch spacers for um, getting the eighth inch space. So here's how it looks after getting it tack welded up. Um, the gap looks pretty good. Um, and this is what it's like inside. So I just dropped the tank end in from the top to see how it would um, fit. And it, there's a little bit of gap here and there. Um, probably not what a factory would quite do, but I think it should be pretty easy to weld still. Um, I did forget to take the dents out of this, so I guess I'll do that.
All right, I got the input in and got one tack on it. Um, there's some spots where the gap is a little bit more than I would um, like to see, but I can definitely close it up with a hammer while I'm welding. Um, what I'm trying to decide is whether I should have the tank vertically or horizontally. Uh, vertically, you'd put this part on top and um, you'd, um, of course, cut a curve in there and weld it onto the tank end. That would be the top. And so this is how it would be if you had it in the horizontal orientation. And of course, you would have to put on some feet on the bottom. Either way, they'd just be a bit different. Um, this obviously takes up more floor space, um, but would be easier to access the motor and compressor head for any maintenance. The other way takes up more, um, less floor space, but might make it a little harder to maintain and a little top heavy. But um, either way, I think would work fine. So here's the spot that's the worst on the, the tank end. The pitting is pretty bad, as you can see. Um, definitely not probably acceptable. So I am going to fill this in with weld and then probably use like a flap wheel and knock it down so that it's barely noticeable. Um, but that shouldn't really matter once it does get welded. Um, so yeah, I will also put another bead around the thing at least. Um, there's a few spots, there's a bit of suck back where the gap was just a little bit wider than I um, would like to have. So here you can see I'm layering up the beads. Um, might not look perfect, but it's definitely very usable. And then I'll use a flap wheel probably to knock this down. As you can see now, it's pretty well corrected. The issue that I had before is kind of shiny, so it's a bit hard to see. So here's the leg design that I have going on now. Um, I'm going to drill a hole in the center of that first. Um, this is a template I made out of some particle board. Um, and then just use that to plasma cut them out. And um, this should just weld right onto the bottom tank end and be able to have a rubber support between it and the floor. All right, so here we have the legs finished being put on. They definitely didn't come out too terribly shabby. All the falling kind of came out nice. Been playing with the inductance a bit on the machine. It's pretty fun to see what you can do with your bead. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll flip it over and drop like a marble in it and see where the lowest point is and then I'll put the drain um, pipe right in there. 
Well, I guess that's where the lowest point is. I can put a little mark there and drop it a few times and find out for sure. Alright, so we stuck the lid in like this sideways and then started hammering it up and um, we got it in a little too far in a few spots but we can just hammer it out. So I put in a tack here at the distance I want it, um, the gap, and then we're going to just bring this out from away from that. Alright, so here it is. I got it um, all tacked up close enough, nice and good. Um, here is a little bit open where the weld seam was. I just heated it was up with the oxyacetylene and tapped it back down. So here it is, it's now a tank, I would say officially. It is all welded up. I'm probably gonna do another pass just for good measure, even though that would probably be perfectly fine with this one pass. But um, while you've got it here, it's good weld practice anyway. I hope you guys enjoyed part one of the air compressor build project. Um, part two is just about ready and we'll be wrapping things up there. So I hope you guys subscribe and follow along to all the fun projects here on Creativity Unleashed. Thanks guys.